In 1296, John de Warren, 6th Earl of Surrey, achieved a significant victory at the Battle of Dunbar, defeating John Comyn, Earl of Buchan. Following this victory, King John Balliol, the Scottish monarch, was compelled to surrender to King Edward I of England at Brescian on July 10th. As a result, Scottish landholders were coerced into acknowledging Edward's overlordship, marking a pivotal moment in the ongoing conflict between Scotland and England. However, the desire for Scottish independence was far from extinguished. In 1297, William Wallace and Andrew de Moray initiated a revolt in northern Scotland. By the late summer of that year, they had gained control of several strategic locations, including Urquhart, Inverness, Elgin, Banff and Aberdeen. Wallace and Moray's collaboration was a significant turning point in the Scottish resistance. In September, Wallace and Moray's forces converged near Dundee, and together they marched to Stirling, a city traditionally regarded as the key to Scotland. Stirling's strategic location made it a crucial focal point in the struggle for Scottish independence. In response to the growing Scottish rebellion, John de Warren, Earl of Surrey, joined forces with Hugh de Cressingham in July, and by September 9, 1297, they had arrived at Stirling. However, by that time, Andrew de Moray and William Wallace had already secured the high ground at Abbey Craig, setting the stage for the impending Battle of Stirling Bridge. During the early autumn of 1297, Sir Richard Lundy, a Scots knight, proposed a cunning flanking manoeuvre to the English forces under Surrey's command, suggesting a crossing upstream where the River Forth could be navigated by 60 horsemen at once. However, this sound advice was brushed aside. Instead, the English treasurer in Scotland, Hugh de Cressingham, convinced Earl Surrey to opt for a direct assault across the narrow bridge. It was a fateful decision. The bridge was meager, allowing for just two horsemen to cross it side by side. Nevertheless, it was considered the safest passage over the Forth, flanked by the river's eastern expanse and the marshes of Flanders Moss to the west. While the English infantry, knights and bowmen began the laborious process of crossing the bridge on the morning of September 11th, 1297, the Scots, led by William Wallace and Andrew Moray, patiently watched from their vantage point on Abbey Craig. The Chronicle of Hemingburg recounts that Wallace and Moray waited for the precise moment to strike, a moment when enough of the English troops had crossed the bridge and were deemed vulnerable. Move, will you? What's there to see? When the time was right, they unleashed their attack. The Scots Children Formation, a formation of spearmen, rapidly descended upon the English forces. This well-coordinated assault halted the charge of the English heavy cavalry and then turned the tide against the English infantry. The Scots seized control of the eastern side of the bridge, effectively severing the chances of English reinforcements arriving from the south. For those English soldiers caught in the low-lying area between the river's loop, there was no hope for relief or escape, and most met their demise. Only a small number, perhaps a few hundred, survived by swimming across the river to the other side. Notably, Sir Marmaduke Thwang managed to fight his way back across the bridge with some of his men. As for Surrey, he remained south of the river with a limited force of archers, still in a defensible position. The majority of his army remained intact, 
offering an opportunity to hold the line at the River Forth, preventing the Scots from moving southward. However, his resolve had crumbled. Surrey gave the order to destroy the bridge. He subsequently ordered a retreat towards Berwick, leaving the garrison at Stirling Castle isolated and effectively relinquishing the lowlands to the rebels. James Stuart, the High Steward of Scotland, and Malcolm, Earl of Lennox, who had initially been part of Surrey's army, withdrew from the scene. To compound the English force's misfortune, the Scottish lords, including James Stuart, staged a devastating attack on the English supply train as it passed through the Powes, a woody, marshy region. The ambush resulted in a considerable loss of life among the retreating English soldiers. This remarkable victory marked a turning point in the First War of Scottish Independence, and William Wallace's name became forever linked with Stirling Bridge. Following the Battle of Stirling Bridge, Sir William de Warine and Sir Marmaduke Thweng were left in charge of Stirling Castle by Surrey as he hastily abandoned the area, retreating towards Berwick. This decision marked a significant turning point in the conflict. Stirling Castle, a formidable stronghold, was now under English control, and it was strategically vital for the occupation of Scotland's lowlands. The English losses in the battle were substantial, with approximately 100 cavalry and 5,000 infantry killed, as recorded by the contemporary English chronicler Walter of Guysborough. Scottish casualties, however, remained unrecorded except for the notable exception of Andrew Moray, who had been grievously wounded during the battle and subsequently succumbed to his injuries by November. In the immediate aftermath of the battle, the Scots, led by William Wallace, pressed their advantage. They embarked on a series of raids into the northern regions of England, reaching as far as Durham. These actions highlighted the vulnerability of northern England to Scottish incursions, prompting widespread fear and apprehension among the English population. Recognising Wallace's military prowess and leadership abilities, the Scottish nobles appointed him as the guardian of the Kingdom of Scotland and commander of its army. This was a significant acknowledgement of his role in the struggle for Scottish independence and signalled his ascent to a position of authority and responsibility. However, it was clear that King Edward I of England was not willing to relinquish his designs on Scotland. He began preparations for another invasion, setting the stage for the pivotal Battle of Falkirk, a conflict that would once again alter the course of the First War of Scottish Independence. On this channel, we are putting together narrative historical cinematic battles. Make sure to subscribe and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.